Okay, okay. vectors. Calculus for for our purposes. Um, there's a lot more to vectors that I'm going to actually show you. Okay, um, but for purposes of what we need to know, um, basically it's parametric equations on steroids. Okay, so um, the first thing I need you to, to know is what is a vector? Direction, huh? Okay, so a vector. So if I were to graph a vector, they are noted with pointy brackets. That's a vector, as opposed to a location with parentheses, right? So a vector two one would be graphed as such. Okay, so it's pointing in a direction, correct? We can figure that direction out by calculating the angle with right triangle trig. Okay, that will give us the direction. And we can figure out the magnitude by calculating the length of the vector with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, these are really handy like if you look at, if you've ever seen the news and they have a map with a bunch of arrows on it, and some are longer than the others, those are vectors of the wind. The longer the vector, the higher the wind speed. A speed and magnitude, the magnitude of a vector is the speed of the object. Okay, so basic vector introduction. You can add them, you can multiply them, you can divide them, you can do all sorts of stuff that I don't, I'm not going to show you, but There, we're going to use vectors with parametrics. Everything vector goes with all the formulas you've learned from parametric equations. Okay, so if um, this is this right here is the derivative of a parametric equation, right? Because you have that x equals something t, y equals something t, right? It's dy dt over dx dt. That was your derivative for parametric. Okay. Remember your position. How do we get velocity? Derivative. And how do we get acceleration? Second derivative. The same relationships hold. Okay. Um, and this is basically what I just said. X prime at t, the derivative is the x rate, or the x velocity. The y derivative is the y rate. So that's right there on your paper. Here's the, here's the new part. If you put it in vector form, now we we're writing it in parentheses, those parametrics in parentheses. Well, you can put it in a vector form, and now it's a vector. Then you can take the derivative of each component, and it's now a velocity vector. If you plug t in, it gives you velocity vector, and you can calculate the length of that to find speed. And then, of course, second derivative. All right. So here's this should look familiar. This is the parametric equation for speed of a particle. We probably wrote it x prime of t and y prime of t. Right? And, yeah. X prime and Y prime. That's speed, but it's also the way we calculate the magnitude of the vector for the length of it. Okay. And then here is the length of the arc. Um, or we also interpreted this as the distance traveled of the particle. Okay. So we're going to use that as well. Okay. So there's a lot of prior knowledge here you're pulling in, and all you're doing is adding it. Position, velocity, acceleration, and then all your parametric stuff, we're combining it into kind of an application problem for vectors. Okay. So, we'll get some examples here. Okay, these, 
There are some no calculators and calculator questions. Um, particle moves in the xy plane so that at any time t, the position of the particle given by x of t equals 4t cubed plus 4t squared, and y of t is t to the fourth minus t to the third. So we have position that we calculate and velocity vector. Yeah, derivative. Okay, so if I write the position as a vector, all I do is calculate the derivative. So this would be the position vector. Here's the velocity. And then 4t cubed minus 3t squared, right? And how do I calculate it at t equals 1? Oh, yeah. At b is 1. Oh, we didn't. So what does that vector actually look like? Is that a function or is that a straight line? Well, it's, it'll look just like the one I graphed for you. So what is, we plug 1 in here, what do we get? 11. 11 and 1. At time 1, that's the vector. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Like, is 11 the velocity? Is 11 this the gives you the direction and the speed of that particle at time 1. Okay. So if we want direction, we're going to use the right triangle trig, calculate the angle. Right, 11 out, 1 up, there's an angle there. So the vector is like a straight line between 11, 1, and 0, 0? Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in here, correct? All right. Okay, so there's the direction of travel of the particle. And if we calculate the length of that vector, we get how fast it's traveling, the speed. Okay. So, um, and we'll get to some of those examples. But basically, when you map these functions out, let's say, it, what's the velocity at time zero? Zero, zero, right? So it starts here, and by time one, there's probably some curve here that has a bunch of vectors. So you can, at any time, you can find the singular vector will give you the speed at that time and the direction of travel, right? And that's why I like those maps with the wind on it. If you have a vector like this, that's the direction of the wind and the speed. And then if you have one up here that's a little shorter and it's pointed in a different direction, you know, that's what the wind is doing on the gradient. So if you're a meteorologist, you have to learn this Um the people on TV? No. no. The people at the weather service that give them the data? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Now, what's the acceleration? <laughs> Take the derivative again, correct? There's the acceleration vectors. So, what's the acceleration at 2? 20 and 24. No, 36. Yeah, 36. Because before times 12, squared. minus 12. So you're squared. 12. I got it. I get it. Slow down, man. Woo. 26. Yeah. 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 And it's not very difficult. Um, okay. Allie, you'd probably be able to on this. You guys, uh, the homework is on this. Okay, particle moves in the xy plane, so at any time t greater than or equal to zero, the position of the particle is given by these two parametric equations. 
by the magnitude of the velocity vector when t is 1. Oh, so does that mean you do the same thing we did in A, but didn't find the Do you find the weight in it? Yeah. So, the so basically, we're going to get we're going to get this number and apply the Pythagorean theorem. So then, since that's 11 squared plus 1, that would be a square root of 120. It would have been, yes. Yeah. Why do we need to show you guys this one? <laughs> uh, so the velocity vector. And then the velocity of one. Five and three. Right? Now find the magnitude. Twenty five plus nine is the square root of three. Which is like so we can need the speed, magnitude, length of the vector, all those are the same thing. Money, Oops. cash money, okay, equal one. Particle moves so that x is root three minus four cosine t and y is one minus two sine t from zero to pi. The path of the particle intersects the x-axis twice. Write an expression that represents the distance traveled by the particle between the two intersects. Oh, it's like calculate that center size. Which one? Which one of these is zero on the x axis? Why? Why? So we need to calculate our times where it intersects the x axis. Or it's sine one half. Over six and five pi over six. Yep. So, and then distance traveled, remember, is this integral. Right? So it's basically the Speed speed calculation with an angle in front of it from A to So okay. the integral from pi over six to five pi over six. What's the derivative of x? We have dx dt here. Four sine t. Four sine t. Four sine t squared plus negative two cosine t. And what does it say? Do not evaluate. evaluate. Done. Okay. You can throw that in a calculator. I don't know what the answer is. It said do not evaluate, so I did not evaluate. I thought, I saw, I thought about starting it, but then I saw that this is 16 sine squared t and 4 cosine squared, and it's not going to be a nice pretty one to work out. So. But you, you get the idea of what we're doing here? You're traveling position, velocity, acceleration, and you're just putting vectors into it now. It's a pair of vectors. Okay? Your homework is on there. Um, it should take you oh a half an hour, forty five minutes or so. Do you have? Uh, I'd say you have about fifteen minutes ish. So you can get some work done. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll add to this tomorrow.
and then we'll be done with the charge here. And then we work on our three scores and five. Yeah, we'll have a test next week. Tuesday or Um, square root of x.